Here we go, boys and girls. Welcome to another FPL war. Now, unfortunately, due to internet problems, I'm not going to be able to have a guest on for this particular pod. We always have guests on the FPL, especially the lads from the D&D Footy Factory. So I apologise to Double D and D-Man for not being able to appear on this particular episode because they've had a pretty decent week with their FPL scores. Um, so I'm going to go through what I've been doing and maybe see what other people have also done in our leagues. And the title or the tagline of this particular episode is Risky Business. And I'll tell you what, there has been some risky business done the past few weeks, especially by yours truly. I must admit, I have been taking FPL very, very serious this season. And that's purely because, number one, a lot of people that I know have been doing the same. And number two, I want to win. I want to win. Oh, and the third one is to see Rodri Giggs finish last. But the thing is with Rodri, for those of you who don't know, Rodri thought that every week you had unlimited transfers. So what he was doing, he was making 10, 11 transfers and being minus 44 points at the beginning of the week. So when he gets about 80 odd points, he wonders why he's ended up with 40. But anyway, he's he's rectified that situation. And he's slowly, slowly moving up and he's doing okay for himself. But sorry, Rod, you, you ain't at this level yet, my guy. Anyway, this is FPL War on the NC Network. Don't forget to visit one of our affiliates, the foodfromcypress.com website. Use the discount code NCN12 for your 12% discount. We'll be doing a very, very big giveaway in the build-up to Christmas with Food From Cyprus. So hopefully, hopefully, you guys will get involved and have a chance of winning this super prize, which I'm not going to tell you just yet. Anyway, so this is my team from last weekend. Game week five, if I'm not mistaken. And in all fairness, it started off a bit iffy. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. Because the first thing I did was take out Trent Alexander-Arnold. He had an injury. So he obviously weren't going to play at the weekend. So I brought in Udogi at Spurs. I figured Sheffield United, he might keep a clean sheet, might get an assist. He only ended up with two points. And the gamble that I made was removing Rodri from my team to put in Decadova Reed because I thought Cordova Reed would have a good game against Wool uh, against Luton. Sorry, unfortunately, he didn't even start. The guy played for the Jamaican national team, <laughs> and he was on the bench. Villian took his place, so that really shot me in the foot from moment one. Now, I hate international weeks, not just because the Super National team is shit. But also it's boring. Players come back late. You're going to see players not being able to make it back in time. Like we saw with Diaz and Nunes at Liverpool. And as you will see, I had Diaz on the bench. And that was a good move, really and truly, because he only came off the bench and really didn't do too much. But if you look at the rest of the team, Sanchez got me 10 points, which I was very, very happy about. Kept a clean sheet at Bournemouth. Chelsea don't usually do well at Bournemouth. So for him to keep a clean sheet and to get 10 points, I was very happy with. I mean, if I look at the, the points total and how he got his points, 90 minutes, um, made four saves. So again, that boosted his points tally, plus the clean sheet. Ended up with three bonus points as well. Happy days, happy days. So then you look at the back line. Gabriel, very pleased with his performance. Clean sheet at Everton. Didn't know if he was going to play. Again, that was a little bit of a gamble for me because he had, he's he been a little bit out of favour for Arsenal. But for him to make the team, get a clean sheet, happy as a pig in shit, as they say. Uh, Colwell, Levi Colwell, a player who, you know, I brought in people saying to me, yeah, he's not really going to get many games for, for Chelsea. You know, maybe Pochettino doesn't really fancy him. Well, for four and a half million, I brought him in and he got me six points. At Bournemouth again, clean sheet. No bonus points, unfortunately, but I cannot complain. For the money I brought him in for, four and a half million. Price tag hasn't gone up as well, which is a little bit disappointing. But then again, given Chelsea's fixtures, given the, their results, in all fairness, he got six points against Luton, two points against Forest, six against Bournemouth. You'd think that his price will go up, but they got Villa this weekend. And Villa scraped past Crystal Palace... It was tricky for them. 
They had a European game on Thursday. Is that going to have an effect on their lineup? Again, something that maybe I'll, I'll go into if I remember. Anyway, midfield, Diaby. Diaby, I put him in as, as my vice captain. He actually got on the score sheet, but the goal was disallowed against Palace at the weekend. He got me five points. And again, I was sweating because up until stoppage time at the end of 90 minutes, he'd done nothing. But he came up with an assist, the third goal for Villa. Absolutely thrilled about. So yeah, I've, I'm going to keep him in at the weekend against Chelsea because I know that he came off the bench against Legge of Warsaw. And uh, yeah, hopefully he'll get his start. I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll get his start against Chelsea at the weekend. Marcus Rashford. Two points for Marcus Rashford. Blimey, honestly, it, it was a disaster class from United at the weekend. And Rashford was undoubtedly one of United's four guys. He could have got an assist, actually, had the goal against Brighton not been chalked off. But three goals conceded, not good. De Cordova Reed, I mentioned he came off the bench, only got me a point. Not good enough, but that's my fault because I gambled. And this is why this particular episode is called Risky Business because I'm going in with more risky business this weekend. I'm probably going to fall on my ass this weekend, guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm half expecting me to get maximum 45 points and that's going to be rubbish. But I'm not going to make additional transfers and go into the, season, go into the weekend minus four or minus eight, whatever. I'm not going to do it. And people are saying to me, use your wild card. I ain't going to use it just yet. I'm going to go with what my gut is telling me. And it could be wind. I don't know. Saka got me six points. Got an assist against Everton plus a clean sheet. Very happy about that. Granted, his uh, points tally against United wasn't particularly good. People say to me, oh, well, you know, four points is four points. But he got eight points against Fulham the previous week. But they got Spurs this weekend. Now, again, will he be risked by... By Arteta, I ain't going to lie to you, boys and girls. He's got to start. He's got to start. And I highly doubt that Arteta won't play him in the derby against Spurs. But for me, again, with Udogi at left back, it'll be Saka against Udogi. So I'm kind of hoping for a new, new draw, really. But he got four bonus points at the weekend as well. So that's good for the lad. And they, with games of Bournemouth and City coming up, City's obviously going to be a tricky one. But Bournemouth, you'd expect Arsenal get, to get something out of that. Three points anyway. My front three, well, I went with Nicholas Jackson again. I'm keeping faith with Nicholas Jackson purely because he's the only fit striker Chelsea have. I know Brojo's back in training now, but he ain't going to be ready for the next game. So I stuck with Jackson against Bournemouth. I'm sure you guys seen the meme or the video of him shooting and they did like this video where they expanded the goal and if the goal was 300% bigger, then it would have gone in the back of the net. I don't know what to tell you, boys and girls. I really don't know what to tell you. But, but I'm sticking with him for the weekend. They got Aston Villa. I'm half expecting Aston Villa to win that. I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, look, he's got a score eventually. He's got a score. So could it be at the weekend against Aston Villa that play a high line? You never know. You never know. Now, my conundrum here is Joao Pedro. Joao Pedro came off the bench against Man United, got on the score sheet, scored twice against AK Athens. Will he start at the weekend? Ferguson's fit. I'm guessing Welbeck's going to be in with a shout. Is Joao Pedro my guy to start at the weekend? Again, another iffy one. Haaland came in for me with 12 points. All right, he missed a bag of chances against West Ham. I'm going to keep him as captain for the weekend. I know he hasn't scored. He didn't score in the Champions League game. But I can't not play Haaland. And the reason why I can't not play Haaland is because everyone is going to play Haaland. Everyone is going to put him as captain, especially against Nottingham Forest. I think he scored a hat-trick against them last season at the, at the Etihad. And that's who they're playing at the weekend. So it's a no-brainer here. It's an obvious one. It's a tactical one. I'm not going to go risky with this. Anyway, my bench, Onana had an absolute nightmare midweek against Bayern Munich. I doubt he will be dropped. I can't see him being dropped against Burnley. I don't think Ten Hag will bring in a goalkeeper that he's been after for God knows how long and just drop him after 
a clanger against Bayern Munich in the Champions League. So I'm not going to substitute him or should I say transfer him out yet. Estupinian played against Ajax in the Conference League. Will he start at the weekend? Again, De Zerbi is turning into Pep. We've got Pep roulette. Now we've got De Zerbi roulette. I'm not sure he'll start, especially given the way that Tarek Lamptey played at left back against Man United. I'm fully expecting Lamptey to come in at left back in this game. So, yeah, Luis Diaz, I think he'll start. I'm hoping he'll start, for, you know, injury permitting. So he's the guy that I'm, I'm waiting for. And Bayer at Burnley, they're playing Man United. Can I risk him given United's form? Now, United, wounded animal and all that. Marcus Rashford might come into form. I don't know. I think Bay is just going to have to sit on the bench for a bit longer. He got three points at the weekend, but I don't know. At this stage, I can't make any calculated risks when it comes to this player. So as for my team of going into this weekend, should I say, I haven't decided fully, but as you guys can see, the main one, Neto has come in. Neto has got 23, 24 points, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just double check. How many points has he got in total? Total points, 25. And while he got five against Liverpool, 10 against Crystal Palace, seven against Everton, he clearly is one of Wolves' in-form players. Now, Wolves face Luton at the weekend. And, you know, Kenilworth Road is a difficult place for any team to go to. Any team. It's a small stadium. It's cramped. The players are going to make it difficult. The fans are going to make it difficult. But I think that if anyone is going to turn up for Wolves, it's going to be this guy. So as I did with De Cordova Reed last week against Luton, I'm, I'm using Luton as my cannon for the team this season. I'm, I'm, I'm under the impression or I get the feeling that they're going to probably get the worst points tally in Premier League history. I could be proved wrong, but given the performance that Neto had against Liverpool, given his performance against Crystal Palace, I'm expecting him to show up in this one. I really am. And yeah, you could say, well, you know, against Man United, he got one point. Brighton, he got two points. But it seems that he's their main guy. And for five and a half million, I haven't lost out on anything, in all fairness. And if you look at my team sheet here, I think I've still got three and a half million left in the kitty, but I'm going to probably use that next week. Again, only got one transfer for next week. So I need to be smart with these. Now, going into this weekend, Estupinian, will he start against Bournemouth? I'm not sure he will. I'm not sure he will. But then again, who have I got on my bench? Cole Will had a good game against Bournemouth, played at left back. Will Pochettino go with Chilwell? Will he go five at the back like he did? I don't know. So I'm a bit worried about this one in terms of my team selection. I'm a bit worried. But given what's happened with Deserby, I think I'm going to have to put Colwell in my team for Estupinian. I'm going to have to do it. Bite the bullet, as they say. Now, midfield, I'm not going to change anything here. I'm happy with the midfield. Saka's probably going to start against Spurs. Rashford is certainly going to start against Burnley. Who else have United got to play? Well, they're going to put Pelestri on the right and Rashford on the left or put Garnacho on the left? I think it'll be a big risk for Ten Hag to drop Rashford at this point. But then again, what's he got to lose? Rashford's form hasn't been great. So again, I'm stuck at this moment in time. Diaby, I'm sure he'll start against Chelsea. I, I have high hopes for the lad. He started the season really well. So I think he'll start. I'm hoping he'll have a good game. But then again, I've got a goalkeeper that plays for Chelsea. And the defender plays for Chelsea. Risky business. Luis Diaz, I'm hoping he will start against West Ham. Both Liverpool and West Ham played uh, Europa League this weekend. Uh, Thursday, sorry, what am I talking about? And they face each other on Sunday. I don't think Jurgen Klopp will go with Gakpo on the left. I'm not sure. I don't think he will anyway. So I'm, I'm hoping Diaz will get a start. And Neto, as I just mentioned. Now... Up front, here's my conundrum. Do I go with João Pedro, who's in form? Three goals in two games. Will De Zerbi go with João Pedro? Three goals in two games. It's a painful one. It's a painful one to think about. 
on the one hand, obviously there's rotation. He's he wants to play Ferguson. Ferguson's one of their best, if not the, their best striker at the moment. He's just come back from injury. Then you've got Danny Welbeck, who played well against Man United. Then you've got João Pedro, that's got three goals in two games. What do I do? What do I do? Do I, do I try and go with logic and say, well, João Pedro's in form, so he'll start? <sighs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Or do I think, well, Jackson is due a goal and he's playing Aston Villa? Boys and girls, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put João Pedro on the bench. It hurts to say this, but I'm going to go for it. This is what I'm going with. Fuck it. That's my team for the weekend. Oh my God, I hate this. This is why FPL stresses me out so much. Especially when teams are playing against each other. Especially teams who are out of form like Chelsea, playing against a team like Aston Villa, who have had European escapades, who look pretty dangerous going forward. This is a tough one for me. It really is a tough one. Then you've got, obviously, Spurs playing Arsenal. Another tough one. I've got three players in that game. I've got three dogs in this fight. I, it's stressing, man. It's stressing me out. I know Chris has played his wild card. Oh, he said he was going to play it anyway. So, really and truly, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Honestly, it's, it's doing my fucking head in. But I think I'm going to wait at least two more weeks before using my wild card. I want to get into October before thinking about my wild card. To be honest, I don't want to do it just yet because obviously the games are going to come even more thick and fast. League Cup, Europa League, Conference League, Champions League. FA Cup is coming in January. So, and I've got another wild card to use in the second half of the season. But I think I'm going to wait at least one more week, one or two weeks, get into October and then look at the wild card. For all we know, Chelsea might come into form. Jackson might start scoring goals. He might score at the weekend. You never know. It is stressy. It really is stressing me out, man. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. What would you do if you were me? What would you do? Would you use your wild card now? Are you happy to look at this team at the weekend and think, right, you can get at least 45 points now. At least. Hope and pray. Now, here's the other conundrum. Haaland as my captain. Something tells me to captain Neto. Something is telling me to do it. But that's another risk because the people that I'm playing against in the head-to-head -head and people in my league are going to have Haaland as their captain. And if Haaland delivers against Nottingham Forest, which is what he did last season, it's going to hurt my feelings. It's going to be a big, big risk not to put Haaland as my captain. But then again, conformity. Do I go with conformity? Do I conform with what other people are doing? And copy them, replicate what they're doing. Or do I think, hang about, Neto might come good in this game. You give, give him the captain's armband, he'll get double points. Ah! I don't know, man. I don't know. I think what I'm going to have to do is a little bit of research into who I'm playing head-to-head -head with. Because I'm in a head-to-head -head league. And I'm doing all right so far. Plus, as you can see from the other leagues I'm in, I'm not doing too badly. In fact... Let's do that right now. Let's go into my No Choftes Private League. Second in the table, behind my friend Steve McCarthy. Let's look at Stevie's squad. He got 49 points at the weekend. He got Wan Bissaka in his team. I don't think he's going to select Wan Bissaka. So is he going to put Trent? Trent is 50 50. Is he going to put in a Stupinian? Is he going to make a substitution? I don't know. Ward Prowse has been doing well for him. He's in form at the moment. Free kicks, as we keep saying. Dead balls with Ward Prowse. Botman, he might play at the weekend. I know he played Champions League. So I'm worried here. And he's got Haaland as captain. So if I don't captain Haaland, and Haaland, and Haaland bangs, sorry, my, my voice just fucked up there, and Haaland bangs, I'm fucked. So I'm just going to go the safe route, aren't I? Honestly. Let's see who else is in the league. Davor at Motherwell. I've overtaken him. But who's he got up front? He's got Haaland up front and a captain. So again, I'm, I'm in the catch-22 right now. My, my, my instinct is telling me, put fucking Neto as captain. But I know that's not going to work because Haaland's going to bang. Let's look at Chris. He said he's going to play his wild card. Clearly, this isn't it. But he's got Haaland in his team. Haaland is captain. Henry's out for the rest of the season, so he's fucked. 
Double D. He's creeping up. 55 points for Double D. He got Alvarez as his captain against West Ham. But Alvarez delivered. But he's in the same team as Haaland. Salah is delivering now. It's tough, man. It's techie. Honestly, it's techie. <laughs> Who else? Steve Ayer. Man City fan, Steve Ayer. Former Man City coach. He, he's got Alvarez and Haaland. Who did he put his caps in? Son. He caps in Son against Sheffield United. See, this is what I'm saying. Steve ended up with 44 points this weekend. And Alvarez delivered. Haaland delivered. Son only got two points. So the captain doubled it. If he had captain Haaland, he'd have been on 12 points. 12 take away two is 10. So he'd have got 54 points. He even made two transfers on a minus four. So, yeah, he he gambled this weekend. Or last weekend, should I say. Let's see what Rodri Giggs is doing. What's Rodri done? 47 points. 47 points. Look at that. And I'll tell you what, he selected Isaac, which a lot of people did. If you had to put someone else in, obviously, more points there. Rodri's, Rodri's looking dangerous, but he's got the, the two Brighton players, March and Estupinian, who didn't play, and Van Dijk, who was suspended. So Rodri's a dangerous one. He's got Salah in his team, Buemo. You know, Brentford have got Everton this weekend. It's a chance for points. Is he going to play Elanga? I think you might put Ilanga on the bench and put Solly March in. I think anyway. Right, let's go to some other leagues I'm in just to show you guys what Stow is doing. The This Is Mapa League. There we go. Fifth in the table. Shout out to Valendino. Top of the league. He got 40 points at the weekend. Haaland is captain. Bale. Saka is in the team. Diaby is in the team. He's got Gusto though. who's doing well at Chelsea at right wing back. Is he going to make any substitutions? He's got Botman on the bench. Missed out on nine points there when Chilwell got zero. So there you go. Dangerous game to play if I if I remove Haaland as my captain. Giovanni. Let's have a look at Giovanni's team. 45 points at the weekend. Trippier, eight points. Ollie Watkins at 10. And Ollie Watkins is playing Chelsea this weekend, boys and girls. Difficult one. Risky business. So, yeah, I'm fifth in the table in this one. Let's look for another league. Uh, Sainsbury's Hodgson, my guys, my mates who used to be uh, uh, hot at Sainsbury's with me back in the day, long time ago, man. Long, long time ago. We're still continuing this league. Roy's Wi Fi League. I'm down in eighth. Shout out to Haralambo, man. Look at that, 52 points. Haralambo is banging. Salah, 10 points. Haaland, 12. Ja Pedro, Saka, Gusto. Areola at four points. He's doing well. He's got Madison in the team. Is he going to make any changes this weekend? I'm looking at that team. I'm thinking maybe he might make a substitution. He might take out Bruno Fernandes because Bruno Fernandes has been bug this season. Interesting. Interesting. Dimitri, second place. 69 points. Look at this guy. Who did he have in his team? Haaland, Alvarez, Salah. Colwell, Sanchez, Saliba, Saka. He got big points this weekend, man. Or last weekend, should I say. It's tough. It's tough. But they're very similar players, if you think about it. Saka's being selected. Let's go with Mario. He's a Man United fan. Let's have a look. So he went with Salah, Haaland, João Pedro. You see, he's got Mitoma and Rashford. Saliba is in there. Sticky. Sticky one. I don't like it. I really don't like it. It's, it's hurting my feelings. It really is hurting my feelings. But yeah, this is the problem with, with FPL. Like you're effectively looking at other teams and other people who, you know, what are they doing at the weekend? The DD Footy Factory League. Here we go. Third in the table. I'm happy with that one. But the one that is, well, there's two really. It's the, obviously the No Choftes one that I just showed you. But this one down here, boys and girls, the Justice League, which is a head-to-head -head league. I got a win at the weekend against Eman. Eman was unbeaten before this. So going into game week five, my guy was unbeaten. He got 42 points. Look at that team. Onana, Chuo didn't play. Eze only got one point. Fernandez one point. Mitoma, two points. Haaland at 12 points for him. Obviously, Alvarez 
kept his head above water. This is who he's got on the bench. Estupinang, Archer and Botman. I think he's going to make a substitution or a transfer. Sorry, I think he's going to take out Bruno Fernandes. I think bare people are going to take out Bruno Fernandes this weekend. And who do I have going into game week six? Let's have a look. I'm facing Jermaine Reed. Last week, he got 57 points. I need to look at his team. Let's look at his team now, actually. Matches, where is he? Jermaine Reed. He played at home last week. Jermaine Reed. Here we go. 57 points. Onana in goal. Trippier, Saliba, Colwell. Uh, that's not bad. Odegaard, Son, Luis Diaz, Saka. So he's got three players at Arsenal going into this weekend against Spurs. If he keeps Son, that's a fourth player. Up front, Gakpo, Awani, and Haaland. Who's he got on the bench? Botman, Lamptey, and Ezra. I think, I think he's going to put Lamptey in. He's got to put Lamptey in because Lamptey will probably play at the weekend. About the expense of who, though? Again, this is a tricky one for him. Is Awani going to play? Because obviously, Forrest are playing City. Will he take out Awani and put in Botman and go 4 4 2? This is a difficult one. This is a very difficult one. So I think he's got a few conundrums as well. And as I said, Haaland as captain. So, no, I'm keeping Haaland as captain. I can't afford to do it. I can't afford to do it. I can't afford to change it. Sorry. So, yeah, let's go to the standings. I'm sixth in the table. As you know, as I said, it's head to head. So, um, yeah. Three wins, two losses. Three points behind the man. But the competition is techie. Gary Wilson, Michael Bailey, Josh Smith, Delvin Gray and Eman. Those are the people that are above me. And they've got some pretty decent points. But if you look at their scores over the, the course of the season, ah, uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm doing better than everyone else apart from Michael Bailey. So is Michael Bailey the main guy to look out for this season? I know uh, Darren ain't going to be too happy about it. Darren, who's won a lot of FPL competitions. I know it's a marathon, not a sprint. But he ain't going to be happy sitting down there. So, yeah. Let's have a look. Let's see what else I've got in terms of my leagues and cups. Is there a, a league that we have? Um, blah, 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 blah. I'm in loads of leagues. I'm not doing too badly. Like I'm going up the table in a lot of these leagues. Let's have a look. Um... Blah, 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 blah. No chof, there's private. Done that one already, haven't we? Which one shall I go to? Football Holics. There we go. This one, I've got a paid entry here. I, can't, I think it was five euros, I think it was, to end at this one. Fourth place. Not doing too badly. Only 30 points behind the top guy. Got 50 points. And that ain't a bad looking team. That ain't a bad looking team. But again, he's got the same deserbable conundrums here. Because Mitoma, is he going to play at the weekend? Is Jao Pedro going to play? Is he going to play a Stupinian? Matty Turner in goal. Is he going to make a, a substitution to put Arelo in? Areola, sorry. I don't know. Is he going to transfer out Rashford? Because his bench ain't looking too strong. So he he's one of these FPL players that focuses on the 11. I'm trying to scatter it across so at least I can have some variation. And I think that's what is going to win it for the, the person that ends up winning it. But look at his record. Fuck me. He's top of the league in most of his leagues. Rah! Bravo there. That's impressive. That's impressive. So, yeah, just going back to my team. This is what I'm going to go with. I'm, I'm going to go with this. Shall I go with this? Now I'm just thinking about it more and more. Should I put in Onana after that mistake? Should I put him in? I don't know, man. I really don't know. I really don't know. This is this is hurting my feelings. Thinking about it now. Onana Ringol against Burnley. I know Burnley are gonna create chances, but are they gonna are they gonna try try and play United off the park? I don't think that oh, man. do you know what? Fuck it. I'm putting him in goal. I'm putting him in goal because I can't I'll tell you why. I'm, I'm keeping it like this. I'll tell you why I'm putting Onana in goal against Burnley. Not because I think Burnley is shit, because I know Burnley are going to give United the game. But I look at that Aston Villa team and I know they'll create chances, but then he's going to make saves as well. 
the saves, the points. Oh my God, Stel, what are you doing to yourself? I can't believe I'm actually doing this while I'm recording. Risky business. Risky business. Do you know what? That's it. I'm going to gamble. I'm going to gamble. I'm going to go on honouring goal. I'm going to go Udogi against Arsenal, against Saka. It is what it is. Cole will, okay, if if they concede, I know it's not going to be as many if, uh, points lost if I put Sanchez in. And that's Gabriel, centre-back, leave it at that. Saka, Rashford. Rashford has to do something. This is his last week, by the way. I'm just saying this now. Marcus Rashford, this is your last week in my team. If you don't deliver, that's it. Boom. Because you've got Palace next and Brentford. If you don't deliver against Burnley, you're out. You're gone. 8.9 million. His rating has gone down. His value's gone down. I mean, what, what have I got in terms of my transfers? Let's have a look at my transfers. I've got 3.5 million in the bank. So if he drops another clanger and he goes down to 8.5, fucking hell, I ain't going to have nothing else to play with. Oh, what is this? Marcus Rashford, MBE, you need to deliver, my guy. Not good enough. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of my team. Let me know your team. And if you want to join any of our leagues, let me know. Uh, I should really give you guys the, uh, the code to get into our leagues, isn't it? I should really do that. I'm going to put that in the description and fuck it. If you want to join, I'm going to... Which league should I put it in? I think Roy's Wi-Fi League will probably be the best one. Yeah, I'll give you the, the code for the Roy's Wi-Fi League to join us because... It's all pandemonium there. It's all fucking techie. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, don't forget to join our Discord, join our Facebook group page. Uh, we've got a whole bag of stuff going on when it comes to this is my poll when it comes to no chofters. Um, We've got Facebook group pages all over the place. Again, visit foodfromfrappers.com. Use a discount code NC12 for a 12% discount. Anyway, till next time. Good luck with your FPL this weekend because I need luck.